If we pick any position on the transmission line, we can imagine the voltage changes sinusoidally with time. And we can write V V of T is equal to A cosine omega T if we choose a position D. Uh, omega here is of course 2 pi f, it's the angular frequency. We don't know the amplitude yet, so I just put in an a, a capital A to stand for amplitude of the voltage wave. Position D does not show up in this equation yet, so we need to pick a position D where the voltage will be equal to this, and then the voltage everywhere else on the transmission line will be relative to the voltage at that position. What position on the transmission line do you think we should choose to have the voltage equal to this? What do you think is most convenient? It is convenient to choose the position D equals zero as the phase reference. So this position will be our phase reference. So then we can say V at D equals zero is equal to A cosine omega T. Now we still need to take into account the phase change that will occur with position as D changes. The amount of phase change there is relative to the load depends on the wavelength of the wave traveling down the transmission line. As a result, the amount of phase we should add is the phase constant theta multiplied by the distance from the load. So we'll take beta and multiply it times d, where beta equals 2 pi over lambda. That's our phase constant. This means that we can then write the voltage anywhere along the transmission line as v, as a function of d and t, our amplitude a cosine omega t plus beta d. Let's take a step back and see if this equation makes sense. We know the wave will occur earlier in time as we travel from d equals zero towards the generator. So as d goes up, we should get a wave that is earlier in time. How does d change to get a constant argument. Like say we want to track a peak of this cosine waveform. How does D need to change in order to get a constant argument? So um, as, as time T decreases, as we go, goes, as time goes down, as we go earlier in time, how does D change to get a constant argument? Well if we look at this argument, as t goes down, there's a plus sign, so d would have to increase, which makes sense, because as we increase d, we go uh, towards the generator, which is earlier in time. So good, this equation makes sense. Note that this form that we just derived with an argument of omega t plus beta d is equivalent to the argument we had in transmission line notes 4, where we talked about the wave equation and solutions to the wave equation with the form Z minus UPT. And it's equivalent because UP is equal to omega over beta. So the argument still behaves the same way whether you write it in this form or in, with an omega T plus beta D. Okay. Now this is for the simple case where we have a single voltage wave propagating from the generator towards the load since the load is matched to the transmission line. If the load was not matched to the transmission line, we would get a reflection and we would have to add two sinusoids together to get the total voltage on the line. And if there was another reflection from the load or generator, you'd have to uh, yet uh, add another voltage sinusoid. So adding more and more sinusoids together. You might imagine that analyzing the transmission line in the time domain with all the possible sinusoids is cumbersome. So for sinusoidal steady state problems, we are going to use what's called the phasor domain. The
the phaser domain will make it easy to add multiple sinusoids together. A phaser is a geometric representation of a sinusoidal signal as a vector in the complex plane. So here the x-axis will be the real axis and the y-axis will be the imaginary axis. As the phaser's phase changes with distance along the transmission line, the phaser vector, the phasers that we're going to draw, are going to spin around this complex plane. We'll see that in just a minute. Phasers include information about the magnitude, which would be the magnitude of our vector, the magnitude of the signal, and also the phase. The phase will be given by how much this vector has rotated around the, the complex plane. But it does not include any information about the frequency or the time. We ha time is not evolving in the fa phasor domain. All the propagation has already happened. We have to remember at what frequency the phasor is valid when we convert to the phasor domain and perform the calculations. So remember we had an omega in our waveform that has an f and so our phasor is valid at that f that's given in the original expression. We use the phasor domain to simplify our calculations. Factoring out the frequency and time is purely for convenience because it helps to simplify the equations and the analysis. We're going to go through an exercise now where you will convert to the phasor domain the voltage time waveform we just developed for the matched transmission line. Use the handout to convert the voltage expression that's given here. So the handout should have been posted right above the video. So take this expression and convert it to the phasor domain.